Hello fellow hunters, this is Haroja Shai, and this is another Satoshi's Hunters uh, episode. <coughs> this episode, um, there has not been a key released thus far. Uh, we're just kind of, I guess you can say, waiting on May 11th. Seems to be at least a hint at the possible end date for that key, whether it goes to the vaults or... Um, the three field agents, their keys have been uh, found. Uh, there have been all sorts of different hints about China for particularly field agent two and the fact that none of the field agents are in the states. So we'll see. Uh, again, there was also, um, what's another good update? Oh, uh, a look at the Business cards were hint were hinted um, on the uh, Toshi's uh, Twitter account, and it was a picture of a woman, but it's not Dobi Wan. So there's another uh, woman that's part of the Game Maker gang, if you will, and she has one of the business cards, and it looks like this uh, kind of like almost glass. It's very translucent, very futuristic, kind of very cyberpunk. Uh, I almost want to say it's minor Minority Report-ish. I want to say in the film they had identification cards or some swiping. I'm, I'm sure it has some kind of influence in via movies or some book into its look. But, um, so yeah, we have a kind of a, a hint of what the business cards look like. So when we do receive them as either individuals or a group, at least we know we have the right type of business card, if you will. Uh, again, May 11th is when the the human um, project, the art project, is in New York. It is also coinciding with the same time of the Magical Crypto Conference, that um, Magical Crypto Pony Conference. I'll have a link of all these places in the show notes uh, that Eric is speaking at. And he will be giving out business cards um, while he is in New York. So if you have an opportunity or chance to get him, uh, I guess he will have those business cards until he, he's run out of them. And then there's that art exhibit that runs, I believe it was today and yesterday. But I haven't heard much. I'm, I'm assuming it's May 11th is when it was, like the 11th and the 12th, if I have my dates right, is when it's open and you can go into the exhibit and, and see the artwork. And that's uh, another chance to obtain a possible key, which is very different from the other keys. It's, it's part of, I guess you could say, the mini hunts, much like the um, the egg from the, the rabbit key. Uh, if you were able to solve that first and obtain the QR code, then you would have been able to obtain um, the BTC equivalent of whatever amount of money people had spent to obtain that uh, clue to unlock that key. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this little brief update because we, we have a bit of a lull. Um, you know, there hasn't been really much traction on there's not another key that's been released. Um, as far as the site goes, and there has been no public groups that have declared that they have either found a field agent, received any information from the field agent really, uh, or at least have collected one, two, and three, all three field agents. There hasn't really been much traction on this particular key. But the Satoshi's Treasure website did release a privacy and data protection policy, and I figured I might as well read it. Uh, you know, most people, I guess that's a whole, whole South Park terms and service, you know, condition, we're conditioned not to really read these things. A lot of people actually do read them, and that's when you start getting red flags and notices. But for the most part, we're kind of conditioned just to hit agree and move on. Um, a lot of it, a lot of it is done in very confusing language, intentionally. So it protects the company, but still gets what they want. Um, really doesn't protect the users. Uh, for the most part, you know, just people just click because they want to get to the site or get to what they're doing and, and don't really care, really, what they're signing over, which goes back to the whole South Park thing. And a few other bits have done everything from, like, um, 
selling your soul to firstborn child to all sorts of shenanigans if you will when it comes to comedy but oh and there was like I think it was earlier this year some newspaper article had um revealed that there was an insurance company that had been around for a while and one of the insurance policies there's a travel protection it was for travel protection they had their travel agreement and if you actually read the agreement you had the opportunity to win a prize and after x amount of years one person finally did it and they won like a significant amount of money i think it was like maybe like ten thousand dollars or something a large sum of money and they were the first person in i want to say like 10 years when they first started it that you know someone had done that they claimed it and hey you you just never know with these things you know um i also have a link in the show notes to a couple of different crypto puzzles that i posted on the instagram account that i have uh for the sushi's treasure hunt uh there's a couple different um puzzle quizzes and stuff like that that are out there that people could solve and obtain either Monero or BTC. Uh, it seems to be like a lot of these puzzle games are, are coming out um, pretty quickly, if you will, for people to obtain a s- and, and gain some some small amounts of cryptocurrency and, and a fun way to you know engage in the community or engage with a particular currency or, or even a particular company that might be sponsoring the particular price. Anyways, the purpose of this particular episode is just me reading the um, privacy and data protection policy. It's about six pages. It's actually written in a pretty easy, digestible language. I mean, there is some legalese here, but uh, for the most part, I found it to be fairly straightforward. So the purpose of this episode is for me to read the, the privacy and data protection policy. So here we go. (coughs) Satoshi's treasure privacy and data protection policy. The privacy and data protection policy describes the policies and procedures of Satoshi's treasure, parentheses, ST, in quotations, we, in quotations, our, in quotations, us, close the parentheses, regarding our collection, use, and disclosure of your information in connection with your access and use of the Satoshi Treasure XYZ. Uh, parentheses, in quotations, the site, uh, close the parentheses. Our mobile application for iOS and, and Android, in parentheses, the app, which is in quotations, and the other services, features, product, products, content, or application offered by Satoshi's Treasure, in parentheses, Together with the site and app, the services, in quotations, close parentheses, as used in this privacy and data protection policy. Personal data, which is in quotations, means any information that can be used to individually identify a person. We urge you to read this, pol- this privacy and data protection policy in full, but wanted to mention a few things up front. And they have these bullet points here. The privacy and data protection policy covers our treatment of personal data that we collect about you. A, from you directly when you subscribe and use your account on the services. B, from your web browser and slash or device as we, as you interact with with the services generally. And C, from third party websites and services including our business partners and providers. In this privacy and data protection policy, we describe the various purposes from which we use your personal data as well as the legal basis supporting those purposes. As you read below, the legal basis on which we rely for a given use of your personal data may be be contractual necessity, uh, in parentheses, i.e., where we need to use your personal data to complete a contract with you, close parentheses, consent, parentheses, which you must must freely give us and which you can withdraw at any time, close parentheses, and slash, are certain legitimate business interests of ours and or of others, but only where we have determined that those interests are not overriding by your in- own interests, rights, and freedoms. The hunt is hosted and operated in the United States and elsewhere throughout the world through us and, cer- and certain of our stakeholders. 
but using the services you acknowledge that any personal data you provide to us will be hosted on the United States service and servers in other countries. If you are using a service in the European Economic Area, you may have certain ri rights regarding the personal data we collect from you under the European Union General Data Protection Regulation, parentheses, quotations, uh, GDPR, uh, in parentheses. And for purposes of the GDPR, Satoshi's Treasure will be, co be a controller of personal data collection from you through these stakeholders. The privacy and data protection policy does not apply to the practice of third parties that we do not own or control, including but not limited to any third party website, services, products, or applications. Parentheses, each a, in quotations, third party service, in parentheses, that you like to access and may interact with during your use of the service, or to the individuals that we do not manage or employ. We take steps to ensure that we only work with third-party services that share our respect for, for your privacy. Although we cannot take responsibility for the content, products, services, or privacy policies of those third-party services, we encourage you to carefully review the privacy policies of any third-party services you access. What does this privacy and data protection policy cover? The privacy and data protection policy covers Satoshi's Treasure processing of personal data that Satoshi Treasure gathers when you're using the services. As used in this privacy and data protection policy, in parentheses, I mean in quotations, processing generally covers actions that can be performed in connection with the data, such as collection, use, storage, and disclosure. This privacy and data protection policy also covers Satoshi's Treasure's treatment of any personal data that the SD business partners and providers share with Satoshi's Treasure or that Satoshi Treasure shares with his business partners and providers. This privacy and data protection policy does not apply to the practice of third parties and their sites, services, or applications that does not own or control or to the individuals that Satoshi Treasure does not employ or manage. Parentheses, in quotations, third parties, in the parentheses. While we attempt to provide access only to those third parties that share our respect for your privacy, we cannot take responsibility for the content, actions, or data protection policies or practices of those third parties. We encourage you to carefully review the data protection policies and practices of any third parties you access. What personal data does Satoshi Treasure collect from you? We collect personal data about you when you provide such information directly to us when third parties such as our business partners or, partners or providers provide us with your personal data about you, or when your personal data about you is automatically collected in connection with your hunt participation. By providing the personal data of others to you, you represent that you have authority to do so. We, discla we disclaim responsibility for the information of others that you provide to us in the course of your, serv of your, in the course of your use of our services. Information we collect directly from you. We receive personal data directly from you when you provide us with such personal data, including without limitation the following. A subscriber information, including your phone number, email address, any personal data that you made available on or through the services, a bank account and shipping address. If applicable, in order to collect payments on your behalf, provide payments to you, we collect payment information from you, your attendees and team members, your vendors and other parties to whom we provide payments on your behalf and for whom we collect payments on your behalf. Information we automatically collect when you, when you use our services. Some personal data is automatically collected when you use our services, such as the following. IP address, web browser information, operating system information, certain cookies, see below for some more information, and that was in parentheses, and again, some parentheses, collectively, in quotations, usage data, in parentheses. Information we do not collect when you use our service. Browsing history outside of the hunt, including the page you visit when you exit the hunt. Publicly available information about your social media profiles, interests, or pre preferences, or your page view information. Event tracking or screen recording in, in our iOS or Android apps for session replay analytics, and cookies for targeting and marketing purposes. How do we use your personal data? We process personal data to operate, maintain, and understand our services. For example, we use personal data to verify and establish you subscribed, 
process and fulfill your purchases of products, protect against or deter fraudulent, illegal, or harmful actions, communicate with you about the hunt, including sending you updates and emails, compile with our legal or contractual obligations, respond to your user inquiries, fulfill user requests, and resolve disputes. We will only process your da personal data if we have a lawful basis for doing so. A lawful basis for proceeding including consent, contractual necessity, and our, in quotation, legitimate interest or the legitimate interest of others as further described below. Contractual ne necessity. We proceed the following categories of personal data as a matter of, a, and this is in quotations, contractual necessities which enables us to provide you the services. When we process data due to the contractual, contractual necessity, failure to provide such personal data will result in your inability to use some, of, some or all portions of the services that require such data. Subscriber information that you provided us, information that you provided us when purchasing products through the services. Consent. In some cases, we process personal data based on the consent you especially grant to us at the time we collect such data. When we process the personal data based on your consent, it will be especially indicated to you at the, some, at the point of time of collection. Other processing grounds. From time to time, we may also need to process personal data to comply with a legal obligation. If it's necessary to protect the vital interests of you or other data subjects, or if it's necessary for a task carried out in the public interest. How and with whom do we share your data? We share limited personal data with vendors, third-party services providers, and agents who work on your behalf and provide us with services related to the purpose. We limit this based on the minimum information required for such vendors, third-party service providers, and agents to perform the required services. These parties include hosting service providers, email providers, payment processors, cloud communication service providers, shipping providers, and contractors. We also share personal data when we believe it's necessary to comply with, uh, with applicable law or respond to valid legal process, including from law enforcement or other government agencies. Protect us, our businesses, or our users, for example, to prevent spam or other unwanted communication, investigate, or protect against fraud. Last, we also share information with third parties when you give us your express consent to do so. Furthermore, Satoshi Treasures will not buy or sell your personal data to or from a third party under any circumstances except solely in the event that we or substantially all our assets were, were acquired or if we go out of business or enter bankruptcy, in which case personal data will be one of the assets and that is transferred to or acquired the third party that has acquired our assets. However, you should know that Satoshi Treasure would only choose to sell its business or assets to or be acquired by an entity that we believe will take a consumer-first approach to personal data like Satoshi Treasure does, and you acknowledge that such transfer may occur and that all, and that any acquirer of us or our assets may continue to use your personal data only as set forth in this policy. How do we protect your personal data? We seek to protect personal data using appropriate technical and organizational measures based on the type of personal data and applicable process activity. As a, secretary, as a security first company, we go to extreme measures to protect the security and privacy of our customers and our employees. We keep personal data tracking at a minimum and only store which we need in order to deliver the services. We employ, in quotations, at least privileged principles when it comes to giving employees access to the personal data. Employees should only be able to access data if it's necessary for them to carry out the duties of their role, and we also minimize the use of third-party services to only those required to deliver the services. For example, we don't use Google Analytics, third-party cookies, or any similar technology such as pixels, pixel tags, web beacons, clear gifts, and JavaScript, although it negative negatively impacts our ability to track customer activity and trends. Other examples of the steps we've taken to protect our customer data and keep it from third parties include We use a self-hosted open source help desk software to manage customer tickets, so no personal data is shared with the major help desk software providers to prevent unauthorized access to your personal data should you select and protect 
and periodically update your password appropriately and use a password manager to randomly generate your password. We understand the importance of the security of the information we collect, but we cannot promise that our security measures will eliminate all security risks or avoid all security breaches. However, Satoshi Treasures cannot guarantee the security of any account information, unauthorized entry or use, hardware or software failure, and other factors may compromise the security of a user information at any time. Changes to the Privacy and Data Protection Policy Satoshi Treasury may amend this Privacy and Data Protection Policy from time to time. The use of the information we collect now is subject to the Privacy and Data Protection Policy in effect at the time such information is used. If we make changes in the way we use personal data, we will notify you by posting an announcement on our site or services or sending you an email. Users are bound by any changes to the Privacy and Data Protection Policy when he or she uses the services after such changes have been first posted. Effective date of privacy and data protection policy, April 21st, 2019. So this was released, I believe it was May 7th or 8th. Uh, it was posted on their website. So the, the quick takeaway here is they, they are emphasizing that they are trying to not keep our data or keep as much little information that they can about us. The most minimal requirement possible, uh, but they will keep some, have some access to some of our information and what their purposes are. Um, they cover themselves pretty clearly, especially with third party usage, that they seek businesses that have the same privacy focus as they do, but there is no guarantees. Um, I like the fact that they're trying to use an open source customer help desk, that they're seeking to not use Google Analytics uh, cookies, gifts, which I didn't know clear gifts was a tracking mechanism. I'm going to have to look into that a little bit, but that's something new. Or even what web beacons were. I know what pixel tags are in JavaScript, and these are all things that any company or any website or any business is using, whether they like to or not, to be able to gather data and track information on their site. I and it is a way to obtain information about customers, unfortunately, now. Wish there was a better way. I wish there was a sound, clear method where it's not intrusive. I also like the fact that they, once you click on the website then and leave, they're not tracking you afterwards. They just care about you participating on Satoshi Treasures, that their website, and, and that's it. Uh, let's see. I like the disclosure about the fact that if they were to somehow go into bankruptcy and even if they try their best to make sure that the, the, the information they have because it's considered an asset, uh, legally it is, uh, they could just like erase it or whatever, uh, they will try to find a company that's as privacy, privacy focused but there's really no 100% guarantee of that at all. Um, I also like they outline the fact of what information they're actually collecting and what they're not going to collect. But again, they can't say the same for the third party vendors that they may utilize. Um, so it's important to read their um, privacy terms and usage and just double check, you know, trust but verify. <coughs> I also like the fact that they admit that they are, their servers are in the United States as well as in other countries. They didn't specify which, which countries the, those are. I wish they would disclose that, but maybe that's more of, of a security issue. Um, being blanket in the United States, it, it kind of makes sense, and there's so many different servers and farmers and stuff like that, but if they were, say, like Finland, maybe there's only like 12 major server places you can go to, and someone can start eliminating and, and trying to go and access their server. So I, I can kind of on one hand understand why they didn't do that. For the most part, I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with their privacy. Uh, it's very clear, it's very easy to follow and understand. Um, I wish they had released it prior to the game coming out, but I think maybe what it was is they didn't really expect this many people, this much of traffic, so there's certain things that they were just kind of rolling out. Um, but this would have been nice beforehand, so 
particularly when it comes to, and this was an issue with the particular with the rabbit hunt, with the, the purchasing of the egg and the use of that particular third party vendor. People were very concerned about bank account and shipping addresses. In this case, it was an email address. But potentially, we may have to purchase something for a feat or something, and you might have to give up a shipping address. And people are concerned about their privacy. They might not have a P.O. box or use some kind of forwarding address to protect themselves. Or they're hesitant to uh, give out their work address. Some people do that as a privacy measure where they get they can get mail to their work address and it protects their privacy. Uh, but they might be hesitant for something like this. It might make sense for the boss for, for your boss that you're getting Amazon packages or um, your bills. But all of a sudden you're getting like this big old I don't know, this crate and it has some stuff for some game that you're you're playing from the internet. It might not make go over too well with the boss. It depends on your workplace. I mean, I don't know. Um, but there's that. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty satisfied, except for a couple of ver um, verbiage usage at the bottom here. Um, but yeah, so that's the, the privacy policy. Um, they created it April 21st. They posted it uh, May of this week. And now I have to look up some terms about web beacons and cool glyphs to understand how that affects my um, privacy. So that's it. That's the update. I probably might post something tomorrow uh, once um, Eric has spoken, if there's any information about um, what is happening in New York. Uh, or if there's uh, another key release and we have another uh, cool hunt going on. Um, but until then, the hunt is on and to the hunt. This is Rosa Scheib and you have been watching Satoshi Treasure Hunters.